So what I have here on the bench here is a old PCI GeForce video card. And this video card goes into a file server I have here in the basement that serves my files to my computers in the house. And the computer is very old that I have in the basement and I've built it it's kind of a Frankenstein out of miscellaneous parts I've had lying around the house. And this video card is probably probably about 10 plus years old. What happened the other night was I went to go look for some photos on my server and uh, the server was offline and I didn't know why. So I, I went downstairs and I noticed that the computer was on, but uh, nothing was happening. And we've been having some power failures lately. So I have the computer set to boot on last state. So they should come back online once the power restores. So I think I had a power failure and it didn't come back on properly. So I, I took the computer apart. I started changing a whole bunch of parts. I didn't think that the video card was was really the issue at first. Uh, even though I wasn't getting the the computer to boot, it would uh, the the uh, monitor would not turn on, and I thought it may have been due to some bad RAM or the motherboard or something. I wasn't quite sure at the point. So I ended up taking uh, some different RAM, swapping it in, and, and pu putting the old stuff back in. And then finally, the second thing I tried was changing out the video card. And sure enough, the monitor turned on and the computer booted just fine. So there's something wrong with this card. And there's not really all that much that can go wrong with this card. It, it doesn't have a fan on it. It doesn't, have, uh, it doesn't have any bells and whistles. Let's just put it that way. It's very basic in its construction so when i put the uh, new newer video card in and it worked I, I just put everything back together and just hucked this aside and uh, i said uh, maybe i'll take a look at it someday sometime down the road see if i can find anything wrong with it and to if you haven't already seen the issue um i'm going to point it out in a second and this is very typical of these uh, cheaper brand video cards even though this lasted a long time they don't use the best quality components on them uh, let's take a for instance these capacitors they're made by FCON and uh, I tried finding data sheets for these and I, I just can't I think they're just some generic off-brand clone uh, China capacitors and you know whatever I mean I think the card was probably $30 when I bought it uh, originally so I can't really complain about the longevity of the product but the parts in them are not very uh, kind of subpar so um, I, I figured w what's going on with this card is it the chip is it something to do with the power supply is it something you know what what's going on here so I figured maybe just the, the cards not powering up properly and so I started probing these two MOSFETs uh, they appeared to be good and it's this is a PWM switching supply that's built onto the video card here and then I, I, I noticed something it was not as obvious on this as some but if you notice there's a slight bulge in this capacitor it's not very prominent but it is there so I think we're dealing with bad capacitor issue on this card which is a very easy and cheap repair and I think that's what, what it is. Um, this is these are 6.3 volt 1000 microfarad capacitors. These are not very, I'm not going to say they're not easy to find, but they're not very standard. Uh, you're not going to go into a local store and find these very easily because these are typically found in a lot of computer power supplies and motherboards. And um, you, you can order them online, no problem, but I don't think you're going to find them any, anywhere locally very easily. You can substitute them in for, uh, you know, a 16 volt capacitor, but they're going to be a lot fatter and the, the, the um, leads are probably not going to match the whole layout. Um, I have done that in a pinch and you most certainly can do it since it is your item that you're repairing. It may not look pretty, but it, it will function. Uh, so I'm going to take my uh, ESR meter and I'm just going to do a quick in-circuit ESR reading of these two capacitors because they are basically doing the same thing with these. They're, they're hooked up very similar to these uh, switching MOSFETs. 
So um, one could say that if uh, one reading is far off the other, it is probably bad. Um, I mean, it, this is pretty obvious that it's bad, but I, I want to see what the ESR reading is. So I'm going to take an ESR reading of the first capacitor, which I suspect is probably okay. And today I'm just using my ESR meter. And I, well, the capacitor of uh, 6.3 microfarad, um, 6.3 volt, 1000 microfarad, um, it should roughly probably be under 0.1. So I'm going to reset my meter here. And let's see what we get on the good capacitor. 0.03, I would call that good. And let's read the bad one that I suspect is bad. Let's see if we can get this out a little bit more. 0 0.25, 0 0.24. Yeah, so this is a very this is a bad capacitor. It's probably not um, severely bad, uh, you know, because I think it was kind of somewhat working. But I think the ESR is just so high at this point; it's it's just creating problems with this switching switch mode power supply. I um, I did have uh, a couple instances where I was able to, uh, during a power outage, the, the computer did boot, but I was having trouble with it, and it did this to me once before, but it actually, the problem went away for a while, and then it came back and never, never I was never able to get it to boot, so it, it has been kind of dying for a while, and I just wasn't sure it was the video card, I thought it may have been the motherboard, so I kind of limped it along and didn't investigate it very much further until it didn't boot at all. So, um, yeah, these 6.3 volt capacitors, uh, the, trying to get these out of these type of boards, uh, like computer power supplies, um, not computer power supplies, motherboards and video cards tend to be a little bit more trickier because the ground planes in these uh, shielding are so much so greater that it takes a lot of heat to remove the components sometimes uh, on through holes on these type of boards. Uh, if you ever try to replace uh, capacitors on a motherboard, you will you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. It, they, it requires a lot of heat, and the V's are so small that sometimes they they're, they're they're very hard to get a lot of heat on them. So what you can do sometimes is just create a big uh, solder ball on it and uh, just keep heat on it until uh, the whole via becomes molten and you can suck it out. Or if you have a, um, a desoldering gun, sometimes that will help as well. But sometimes it, you need to get a smaller tip in there because of how small the veer is. And now this, yeah, these look like they might be slightly tricky. So uh, yeah, that is the problem. This video got very cheap repair, and I'm I'm pretty sure I'm 90% sure by replacing that capacitor is probably going to fix this. No problem. I think the it will boot up the the uh, PWM power supply and this thing could probably go into service for another you know five ten plus years if I replaced all these capacitors uh, I'm going to see how uh, replacing these two capacitors uh, well actually I, eventually I would like to get all new capacitors but uh, um, I, I kind of want to pull these out to see what they read uh, out of circuit versus in circuit my first attempt is going to be using just a solder sucker and just my soldering iron uh, see how bad it is to get out. Hopefully it won't be so bad. I'm just going to flood the joint here with some fresh solder because this probably got some lead free crap on there. And I can already tell that it's not melting very easily. So, and Sometimes they make these components so tight in those vias that it's almost impossible to get um, the solder out between them or the heat to transfer properly because of it. Let's see if we can get these out. Well, it did seem to clear, at least on one side. This has got the ground side on it, so it's probably going to take a little bit more heat. Yep, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. I don't know if I can focus here, but you can probably see one side of the capacitor, the hole cleared, and the side with the ground plane on it is uh, not coming clear because of the 
substantial heat loss it's taking. And this is a very big tip for, um, and, and can supply a lot of heat. Sometimes it takes a little patience. Sometimes you'll have to put it on there longer than you think you would have to. And I might try to uh, apply a little bit more flux here just to help things along. Sometimes that will help things flow a bit better through the via. I'm just going to put a big, big blob on there. And let it just cook there for a moment. Would help if I charged it. There we go. Yeah, still, it's still not clearing. These are a pain in the ass. That's why I hate working on motherboards and I hate working on uh, video cards and stuff like that. It's just, it can be very problematic. Now I got a big juggernaut soldering iron that I might have to break out to kind of get this one stupid little joint out, but I don't want to do that. I don't have to. And sometimes you can kind of preheat the area with a heat gun. That does help some. And as always, yeah, this is not, not fun here. It's not coming out as easy as I was like. Sometimes since you have one side, you've kind of broken free which is, you can actually see it moving there. Um, sometimes if you've got one side broken free, you can actually rock the capacitor out of there, which I might try doing now, is just putting a little bit of uh, uh, heat on there and just kind of rocking it. You gotta be very careful when doing this because you can actually break the via or the solder uh, pad. I just wanna see how tight it is in there. And it does appear to be starting to come out, so I'm just going to keep my heat on that via, and yep, there it is. Just popped out. Okay. So at this point, the capacitor is warmed up from all the heat that I've given it, and it, that's going to change your ESR reading. Sometimes it can actually make the capacitor look good again. So I want to see what we got here because some heating a capacitor will will temporarily uh, make it look good and adding cold to it um, to a bad capacitor will make it look a lot worse that's why when you use your freeze spray or your uh, hot air rework station on capacitors if you have a, a bad capacitor that's going slightly bad uh, it will it will uh, make the fault come and go by using that method. Okay, we're at point six now. So it reads a lot worse out of circuit than in circuit. Uh, but when it was in circuit, it could have been parallel or, or in series with other capacitors or components so we, or resistors. So we really don't know if that was an accurate reading or not. But out of circuit, we're getting 0 0.6, 0 0.7. So this capacitor is definitely toasted and most likely part of the issue why that, that car is not booting up. Um, so I'm gonna have to, I don't have any 6.3 volt capacitors in the shop and I've already have the uh, uh, video card replaced. So this is going to be one of those things where I'm just gonna order the capacitors whenever I feel like I wanna do this and just recap this whole card and put it back on the shelf and wait for that card to fail that's in it now and then it'll have something fresh to put back in it and that's that's about it guys that's i just wanted to make a quick video about um you know stupid things like this that come up that you you can probably fix on the cheap uh so you can probably get one of these capacitor kits here i got this off of amazon this is nothing special uh, these are probably cheap chinese junk yep made in china capacitors uh, you know I'm, i don't advocate using these if you're going to be replacing something that you really care about or if you're going to be fixing something that uh, you're going to be uh, working on for somebody else 
But uh, these are good in a pinch if you got stuff around the house that randomly dies and you just want to slap something in to get it up and running again. And the closest uh, value I have to put in there would be a 16 volt, 1000 mic uh, capacitor. And see how much difference that is in size. I think I dropped the other capacitor here. Um, the diameter is much bigger and the length and obviously the lead is a uh, different distance apart from each other. So it, it, I wouldn't say to use something like this and also the lead diameter is my, a little tad bit thicker so you would probably have a hard time getting this through those vias. Um, that's not to say you couldn't widen out those vias and jab this in there but I, I wouldn't recommend it. At this point you probably would just want to find uh, either a donor capacitor from something else you have lying around the house or just order a bunch of 6.3 volt uh, 1000 volt uh, microfiber capacitors and if you're working on computer power uh, motherboards and uh, stuff like this a lot this is a very common size is 6.3 volt 1000 2000 3300 uh, so those type of capacitors you probably want to keep a stock in I, I don't work on a lot of that stuff so I don't do that so uh, that's about it but these are uh, these are capacitor kits are nice to have uh, for quick easy repairs on things around the house and uh, like I said they're nothing special and not only that they're good for prototyping on um, you know projects and whatnot if you just need some standard filter capacitors for linear regulators or whatnot they're nice to, to play around with and I don't think it's more than uh, 12 bucks for this whole kit or maybe maybe 20 I don't remember if I uh, find this on Amazon I'll put the link in the description and you can pick one of these up yourself so that's about it for this video guys uh, I appreciate you watching and uh, that's it have a good night